Hey community, here's what's brewing today. Beyonce tour, take all my money. Leslie Jordan, RIP. And one star review. So get your cups ready for a minority report. Hey, welcome to Minority Report. It's Auntie Carell. It's Auntie Duan. And it's Auntie Landon here for Auntie Jarrell. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey. You know, Coming uh, in with the late clap. <laughs> oh, that one last week was so late. <laughs> it was so late. Oh, man. But uh, yeah, Auntie Jarrell's out sick this week. You know, it's that yeah. season, that flu and cold season this year already acting a fool. And the new Homocron, the new Omicron out here. Yeah, they're saying it's about to be crazy. So I'm like, ooh, girl. But you know what it is, though. A lot of it, a lot of it is the fact that a lot of people aren't wearing masks. Yeah. Because yeah. when we were when we were in that pandemic, when nobody getting sick but catching COVID. Yeah. Now I'm everybody, about- all of a sudden, they got the flu. They got a cold. They got yeah. this. They got that. And ain't got COVID. Yeah, I'm about to. I think I'm about to start wearing my mask again. At oh, least I like wear on mine. this train. Yeah. And everything, because I'm like, ooh, y'all like Not, no. coughing mm-hmm. and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not about so, to get your your secondhand particles, ooh, no, ma'am. No, <laughs> ma'am. But uh, well, community. Hopefully, you're not sick, and hopefully, you're not sick yes. of your aunties. And if you're yes. not sick, subscribe, hit the bell hey. button. So anytime you see any new content coming yeah. up here, and you'll probably see some more coming up here because it's the new season of uh, uh, the. Uh, why can't I think of it right? Um, I think a pop up productions is the production company, but it's set it off Atlanta. There we go. They got the new season about to come out. So, so we'll see. I might do the reviews again. I didn't even watch the first season. I need to watch that. I yeah. need to watch it. I got to add it to my list. <clears throat> yeah. And watch this one. Cause I guess the first season they're saying was kind of like almost like their test run, their pilot season uh-huh. is what they're calling it now. Mm-hmm. And this is going to be the true, what they say first season. And it looks like, it looks, I mean, it looks like they're going to be just as messy as they always been. <laughs> so so yeah, so hit hit that. those bell buttons and everything. That way you can see when the, whenever the new content's up on our YouTube uh, YouTube channel. And then also <clears throat> write us a review on Apple and Spotify. Leave us a review, yes, like a five star. All one, of hopefully. it, all <laughs> of it, because <laughs> um, it really does help with the algorithms and stuff. I know you're like, oh, all the creators say this. No, it truly does. It's a fortunate and unfortunate part of the the business, honestly. Yeah. But um, help us out. And uh, leave us a good review because there is one person that put a one star. I was like, "Who is this hater that put a one star?" Ooh. Who the hell? <laughs> it's <Ooh>. who the hell? <laughs> what, 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 why refrigerator? Why oh, refrigerator? Oh, my refrigerator, honey. Let's go find you a podcast. Let's go, let's right. go find. Let's go find. Let's go find. Let's go find you some sense, honey. Right? Jeez, yeah. Oh, yeah. Have mercy. Oh, it makes Not me want to dislike. We, right? I was like, oh, what star? Like, <laughs> like an Amazon was review? It, was it really somebody like that listens to the podcast, or was it some bitch ass hater that decided to get onto Who the knows? reviews and just like, decide? Like, what was it though? I don't know. I want to know what episode. What episode made you mad? <laughs> what got you twisted? <laughs> what we, what what we say that twisted? episode? <laughs> I bet it was something I said. Oh, and honey. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> and. Probably. And I say it again. And they say, one star. <laughs> you know what I think it was? I think it was. I think it was the Umbutu episode a couple of months back. <laughs> what up, Corey? That episode was funny. That, yeah, that, that was a good episode. That episode, we just kind of sat back and let him just run with it. We're, we did we, we had zero words that episode. We was like, okay, girl, run. Hey, you know, when, when the truth has, needs to be said, you got to say it. So. You just got to say it. You just got to let it out. Woo. But um, but yeah, so community, hopefully you're, you're, you're safe and sound out there. Uh, you know, it's that cough, cold, flu season. But and um, happy Halloween because our yeah, episode comes episode. out on Halloween That's day. Right. That's right. And if you got some good pictures of your Halloween outfit, send it our way. We'll post it on the it. stories. Yeah, send yeah. your whole pics. Send your yeah, whole pics. Especially huh? the whole pics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> like, Let's oh, Landy, the, the Instagram. Send it private, child. <laughs> oh, let me let me unlock my profile. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, unlock for the week of Halloween. Unlocked. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I know that's right. Slide into these DMs, honey, with those hope pads. You said slide some oil to me. Mm. See, I know that's right. Settings, privacy, <laughs> not private. Switch. There we go. <laughs> Done. I know that's right. You're welcome, everyone. Honey, send them on over. Let us that know. Is. Um. Hold on real yeah. quick before we yeah. get into all the tea. Ooh. Landy and I caught up this weekend. I saw we the had picture some girl time. Posted. Yes, Aww. it was so much fun. You know, it's a, it was about time. I honestly, <clears throat> unlike unlike Jarrell, who, you know, I love. <laughs> you know, it was good to see you. And finally, here we go. <laughs> He's shaking Jarrell left and right. <laughs> Girl, Jarrell weren't even there and she was shaking. Right. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, Damn. 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 No, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, you know, I, I know there's always this idea like, do Jarrell and Landy have beef? But there's, <laughs> there's not. But it was, it was nice to, I feel like I had gone weeks, months. Yeah. It really was just one month, but it felt like forever because Dewan, Adam, and I, we were almost seeing each other every weekend they were like yeah. you coming down to the city i was like honey i'm getting on this train i'm getting this uber i'm gonna get these delta sky miles and getting this uber okay because yeah, you right, could yeah. just to let you know you could do that now that um, and starbucks and starbucks but did so, you know they're getting rid of those reward programs on uber start uh this month october or it might be the end of oh, this really? month by the time this episode comes. so you've got who do i need to write who do oh, i need no 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 it's it's not uber it's lyft right it's yeah lyft is the delta it's miles lyft. Yeah, Uber yes, like to get like you're right, yes, of, uh, yes. star Lift, points yeah. or something, but they're getting rid of them. So if you haven't spent them, you better do it now. And it might be like today, the day we record, it's like a weird day in October. <laughs> right. I was like, yeah, damn, so I got all these random points out here I didn't think about. So Yeah, it was nice to uh to hang out. We um we went to this um really awesome exhibit, the David LaChapelle uh oh, exhibit wow, in the flat it iron. It was real good and it was interesting because there was just so much, there, there, were, there were a lot of, you, you know, obviously they kind of have the captions on the side and everything. It was just, it was just great. I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect. What I didn't know what to expect. <laughs> what are you at? And she had a little meltdown at the white Jesus. You had <laughs> a meltdown. <laughs> I said, Jesus ain't white. white. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Jesus ain't white. I Girl, literally the look- the girl said, behind me turned around like, <laughs> said, I, I said sure what did. I said. Read the I books. Sure listen, <laughs> listen Which, I literally, I literally went up to the exhibit and I was like, and turned around and I was like, and he was like, oh, what's over there? I said, Jesus ain't white. <laughs> I looked at her like, girl, what you want me to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> we already up in this home. Right. <laughs> and wait, 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 wait. Shit did not I did. photograph like 50 years ago. Right, right. right. And wait, That's Corral, I, I didn't even pay for the ticket. The one paid for the ticket and I was hot. I was like, <laughs> he you know what? He did. He did. He wasn't right. <laughs> but you know what? We we ended up going to, after that, we ended up going to um, the Chelsea, the Chelsea, the Chelsea Hotel. And mm-hmm. they just did, it was a huge landmark hotel that's in the Chelsea neighborhood. And they just, um, just reopened. They remodeled the whole inside. It is gorgeous. gorgeous. We, 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 we got in there. We, we went to the back and we were just going to have some after, you know, our drinks and just like get a little litty. And uh, we we order our first round of drinks, and we're just talking and kiki and having a good old time. And then um, apparently there was a shift change, and then the the new waiter came on over and was asking for the drinks. And Adam had asked for a um, Patron. Um, no, I'm sorry, like not squirt. Patron. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, um, uh, Don Julio with seltzer and lime. Mm-hmm. And then the guy says, "Oh well, we don't we don't have Don Julio." And then we all said, Are we? we're like, what? Like, then what the hell did he just order right before you? Because he ordered yeah. Don Julio and the guy said, y'all had it. And then the, the prissy little queen was like, well, that wasn't me. I don't know what he said. I said, well, can't you look it up? Because he had his little, because <laughs> you know, had, you know right. how the, the waiters nowadays have their little iPad yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Like, just look up the table. Like, t- tell me what, because we want to know what he drank. Okay. So then that way. Okay, James Corden. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait. I said, I, I sat in the corner and did this. I said, I said, 
I mean, but he said, so needless like, to say, we're banned out. Uh, we're banned out the Chelsea Hotel. No, no. So <laughs> no, I mean, it all no. got smoothed out or whatever. But I mean, I wasn't being rude. Yeah, I yeah, wasn't yeah. being rude. But yeah. what I was, I was like, I mean, this is easy. You don't have to know what he had. You just look right. up the table. Like yeah. I don't work tables, but I know you got a you got recording <laughs> of what all was purchased. Come to find out, bitch, they didn't even put the order in. They just sent, gave us our drinks, so we got a whole slap of drinks for nothing. Dope. So the so we got we got the second we got the bill for the second round of right. drinks that we had, but the first round because when the bill came, it was like seventy two dollars. Which people it, that are listening it, to her right, are like, Manhattan. wait, y'all got charged, but no, in this Manhattan, is New York. Manhattan, this right. is New York. <laughs> That's a drink and liquor. a half. <laughs> You know, That's one almost a steal. Is twenty dollars. So you know, seventy two is it's whatever. So we knew right then and there they didn't charge us for the first three drinks that we had ordered. So yeah. we were like, okay, I, that, that's Gucci. Period. Yeah. Period. So, so what did he get? So did he drink Don Julio? Did they have? I don't Don know Julio? what he got. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what he got. He got some other kind of. Liquor, he got a free drink. That's all that matters. All I know, right. all I know, is it made up for my Jesus meltdown because Jesus was not white. That and that might be the open of the yeah. show. Jesus ain't white. <laughs> <laughs> we got one, two more to go. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Exactly. Just want to let, just wanna let so, you motherfuckers know. I know that. But it's right. it's so like I, I get what you mean, Landy, because like we literally live like. 45 minutes away from each other by by train or by car you know so you know i'm over here in connecticut like she in connecticut, yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> but you know it, it's just it's so nice to be able to spend time with your judy so yeah, yeah, yeah it, it was, was great yeah, it really fun, felt yeah. like it did feel like forever because i know y'all were traveling and the london trip was kind of last minute I was like, man, I ain't seen these heifers in a minute <laughs> i said i gotta change that i was like i said I need to check. I need to see y'all, y'all bitches, every single weekend between now and January to make up. Yeah, so. and we we well, we did you make come plans. Come on down to Philadelphia. Yes, <laughs> we did make we did make plans. Well, well, by the time this by yes. the time this episode airs, the three of us will have already hung yes, out. That is because what are we doing? What are well, we doing? We ain't gonna say it now. But, well, I guess you won't be here next week. Well, maybe who knows? Hopefully, Drell's uh, better than. But we'll be at the 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 the, the Black Queer Night at uh, a, a Strange Loop, so we'll have a whole episode about that next week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just talking how it went and all that stuff. I'm excited. I'm really excited about that. That's gonna but, be uh, dope. But you know what? I'm, I'm excited about though that I'm saving my coin for Beyonce, Beyonce. summer 2023. <laughs> Nobody's Honey. getting Christmas gifts. Don't expect shit from me because all my coins is going to Beyonce. <laughs> Let me ask Listen, you this question. Yeah. What city are you going into? I already That's, said Atlanta. Uh, and Corey oh, and I finally Atlanta. agreed. Atlanta. Oh, and then okay. we want to see it twice. <laughs> okay. So Corey's like, what's the other city? Are we staying in Philadelphia or are we going to go to New York? So the other two is either going to be Philly or New York. Gotcha. Um, I told him if they do her show out in Hershey, PA, like they did Gaga, my ass going to New York. <laughs> yeah. Because I ain't going a, out there. You see no damn because Beyonce. It's a stadium, it's a stadium tour. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. It's just like, so I'm assuming the New York one's going to have to be at the uh, the Giant Stadium. Yeah, most so, likely. So was yeah. that in like New Brunswick or New Jersey uh-huh. or something like that? Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I, Atlanta is just too black and queer for me not to see Beyonce in this queer black ass album. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like I want to see all the queens turn up. I want to see the outfits. I want to see booty shaking. I want to see glitter in the air. I want to see wigs. I want to see weaves. I want to see fingernails painted. I want to see titties bouncing. I want to see <laughs> dick swinging. <laughs> dick swinging home. And booty clapping. That's all I need. And Holes Atlanta's going to turn out. I Holes know Atlanta's going to turn out. So <laughs> so I gotta get me on the list. So I already told Corey, I was like, we're gonna have to have both of our laptops open because it's gonna be hard to try to get two, like two cities, you know, at the same time. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. I can't do it. I'm gonna get this other city. You are gonna get that city, and yeah. that's how we are gonna do this shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, don't play with me, <laughs> honey. I might have to sell this throat for some tickets, honey. Do what I you might have to buy for some. I might have to buy from some dollars. Do what you gotta do. Because Summer Renaissance Tour. And I like how it just leaked out. Like, she had the gala with her mama's uh, organization and everything. And it's just a screen, a screenshot. And she knew all the gays and everything. And they're going, and not even the gays. Everybody going to see that up on the screen. And be like, wait, does that say Beyonce Summer 2023? And this shit ain't been announced yet? Twitter lit up. Twitter lit yeah. up. 
I'm excited. Oh, I'm so excited. And I hope it's just one, one through sixteen. I need to open the number to be that these motherfuckers ain't stopping me to the end. And then maybe you go into your crazy in love and your ape shits and everything like that. I don't need, to, I don't need, need to see any of that. I don't need 16. to see or hear any of that. It could literally just be the album. Renaissance. The one through 16. I want the I, transitions and all. I would love, love <laughs> But you know what? I, 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 I honestly believe while that's what you want, she's going to give you something that you're not expecting. Oh, 1,000%. Sure, one thousand percent. Yeah, yeah. like I'm you, wear me a you, diaper. I don't even want to go that? to the bathroom doing this. Show. Oh Lord, have mercy! Like, not I'm the nursing me. home tour. Oh, oh my that's god, that's okay. My client got him. I'll give him for free from work. <laughs> give me an adult diaper, ho. <laughs> 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 give me an adult honey. diaper, the honey, honey. Miss honey. Honey. Miss honey. honey, and it's breathable, Miss honey. and I'm not wet. It's a group product. <laughs> Oh hard. my god! I cannot wait! I cannot wait! Corey, goes, I just, Corey I just goes, hope. I'm glad it's not with Jay Z. <laughs> yeah. I just hope that the, the summer date, like the the dates, are not like in August. I just hope because that. Mm-mm. Yeah. I'll still go, but I'll be miserable. I know that. And that's why I want to go to Atlanta because the, the, <laughs> the Atlanta Mercedes-Benz Stadium is covered. So I'm like, okay, the temperature is perfect. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, I ain't got to worry about precipitation. I ain't got to mm. worry about perspiration. <laughs> yeah. Well, I probably will be like sweating a little bit. But that, like, I want a controlled environment. And you know what will be really interesting is that she hasn't released any visuals for any of the songs. So whatever she's doing in the concerts oh. is going to be brand spanking new for everybody. Yeah. The dance routines and everything. And you know, like from the very first concert, wherever it ends up kicking off, everybody all that shit is going to be online. <laughs> it's it's going to be all online. So you're going to watch it. If it goes online, that's going to no. be the hard thing. <clears throat> like it's going to be hard to escape. You know, it's going to be yeah, everywhere. I'll watch it. Yo, I might yeah, have to. I watch. This will be my like this, couple. This will be my first Beyonce concert. <gasps> Bitch, you ain't even I ready. No, I know. Even ready. And and I I guess I you hate know you. I'm not. I know it's okay. You'll be all right. Um, <laughs> I'm closing the door. Wait a minute. Let me let me turn my. Like oh, oh, wash your hands. Wash your legs. Wash your ass. <laughs> See you next week. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Drell, where um, you at? <laughs> <laughs> this will be my first Beyonce concert. And Wait, where I, have you yeah. been? Where, Why is where that, have though, you been? For real. <clears throat> Man, y'all gonna get mad. Y'all gonna get all awesome. we already We already went there. We, are, we so. already on that okay. train, all right. so. <laughs> all right. Read the room, sis. <laughs> I'm not a... Let me dig her I, ticket. I, I, right. <laughs> You know Watch, what? Your words. Words. Watch your words. Watch your words. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Go ahead. Give go me ahead. my money back, man. Um, um, <laughs> nope. <laughs> right. I, you know what? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> dispute. Dispute. Uh, <laughs> dispute. Oh, um, you know what? I, I, I know what it is. No album of Beyonce's has spoken to me the way that this one has. Okay. And okay. and I don't know how exactly how to to put it in words, but I, I feel I, I feel this album, I feel this album a lot more than any other album that I have heard of hers. Okay. And I don't know, you know, growing up in Houston, you know, Beyonce was the thing with, you know, writings on the wall yeah. and and you know when they kind of broke off, you know, in 2005, 2004, 2005, this album just speaks to me and I feel it differently than all of the other albums. It doesn't feel poppy to me. Like Single Ladies was like, you know, very pop music popular everybody was doing it everybody loved it this feels differently i feel it in my Landon soul don't miss the last like one. 11 years though i know i, like, <laughs> I, <don't. laughs> I, I just because i get it. like because there is like the pop era quote unquote of beyonce yeah, right exactly that ain't been since like 2013 i know though. but but 
She's been getting just, blacker and blacker. Black and blacker. And black. That's black. what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. And I guess because I'm so um I, I, I really have to feel music before I like I sign on to it. This this album is just there's songs that I didn't know that I was gonna love. I didn't think I was gonna love because I heard the beginning and I was like, you know what? Let me give this song a chance. Like heated really didn't speak to me at first. And then I started listening to it and I was like, man, I know some motherfuckers at work that that got me literally <laughs> that literally got me heated, but are literally playing the victim and like this, there, there's some there's some songs in here. I'm like, ooh, that bitch at work. Here's the thing: like, you're you're gonna be mad. Well, not mad. Maybe mad is a strong word. You're gonna be like, damn, I should have seen her even before this concert. There's like no, no one out there. No, I won't. guarantee. Because Corey was the same way you were before I took him to formation, and he was like, oh. Because what happens is there's no one out, and, I, and I've seen a lot of concerts, and, and I would say at least there's not a lot of established artists. There's people on the come up that you could tell like they're they're working their ass off and they're and they're putting that effort in. For her to be at this caliber of a level of a celebrity, and still putting the time, money, <laughs> and and effort and energy into these shows. No one else is doing it. And I've seen the Rihannas. I've seen the Adele's. I've seen the Alicia's. I've seen, like, the mm-hmm. biggest stars on earth. Great shows. Great performers. Yeah. Her shit is just a different level. <clears throat> and and it's because she can afford it, honestly. She can yeah. afford the best of the best. And she can afford to push people to push even themselves to do something that they didn't even think was possible. And and that's cool to see that she's pushing industry. She's pe- pushing the lighting. She's pushing the the staging people. Be like, can we do this? And be like, bitch, we ain't never done that before. Well, figure that shit out. Here's some coin, you know. And no, and it takes to be at a certain level monetarily, unfortunately, to be able to do that. And she's one of the few that has the coin to be able to do so. You know. I guess I didn't really jump. I, again, I grew up with. The Beyonce kind of just grow, you know, when Beyonce first became a thing yeah, yeah. growing up in Houston, that was the thing. And so I guess when it came down to when she was in Coachella, that's when I maybe I just jumped on the bandwagon a little too late. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. You know, that's OK. You that, own it now, though. <laughs> I, I'm on it now. You're I listen to this. I listen to this album and some of these songs and, and Corell and I were talking about via text. I listen to some of these songs three, four, five times a day. Yay. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah. I just feel, I feel a lot closer to some of these songs than other songs that yeah, she has put that. out. And I guess for me, I, 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 for a long, a long time, I just couldn't understand like, all right, like y'all, y'all spending all this money for one person. <laughs> got, listen, listen, I'm about to be one of them bitches that is about to, that I was Drop talking these about. coins. So, uh, you, you know, I, when it comes down to, uh, you know, I got a nigga in college, so I got to watch these coins sometimes. But you know what? That's true. I'm just going to have to do it. It's just going to have to be charged to this Amex shop because yeah, it is it what later. it is. It is what it Beyonce, is. Beyonce, whether you are a Beyonce fan or not, when you go to a Beyonce concert, no matter if you're sitting on the on the floor or in the rafters, you get your money's worth. You get a whole show from start to finish. Yeah. And even after it's done, yeah. like people be staying there, still dancing, partying, mm, having fun with you. It's, it is like, you know, like you don't, I've gone with people who are not, who literally are not Beyonce fans. They don't listen to her music. They think she's overrated. Da da da. They came and they left saw. Beyonce fans. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I don't I don't go to different. a lot of concerts. Like I'm I'm a little bit of like I'm because I'm I'm not I'm not going to a concert and I'm not sitting in in you know 200 rows, 300 rows. I'm not no, I'm not doing that. If I'm going to a concert, I'm going to be on the floor. Like I'm going to be right there. And so I'm going to spend more because I want to see it. I don't want to spend, you know, like $100, $200 and be staring at the screen. 
Greeny the whole damn time. Like that to me, a concert experience does not make. So I, and there's not many artists that are out there that I'm like so inclined that I need to see them in concert. I've seen, I've seen Lady Gaga in concert. I didn't want to do it, but I did because (laughs) I did because, you know, a mutual friend, it was, he had never been to any concerts in his life and his favorite artist was Lady Gaga. And so we got him tickets for his birthday to go see Lady Gaga in Chicago. And I didn't really care about that concert. <laughs> and, and I didn't even have any fun while I was there. Ooh, damn. So, you know, I mean, <laughs> just me. I'm damn. not saying that it was a horrible concert, but it's just, it's more my cup of tea. Yeah. And plus it was, it was Joanne. So, yeah, that was a hard you know, era. Mm, that was a hard so, era. <laughs> but, but what I'm, but my point of it is, is that the concerts that I have gone to, like, you're getting a you're show. Getting your you're worth. getting a show. And Beyonce, I've been to every single concert tour that she's been on, and I don't regret any Not single single, single lolly single single dollar that I've spent. Nope. To be up close. And sweat personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And girl, we know you sweat. I'm talking about her, not me. Her. Beyonce sweat. I'm I'm not doing this. (laughs) (laughs) She's like, "Ah." yeah. No, it's it's worth it. So uh, in community, we we know it's it's gonna be a pretty pretty penny. (laughs) It's that's that's what we do know for sure. It's gonna be a pretty penny. But and that Craigslist M for M section ain't for ain't up anymore. So you don't have to figure out some other way. Do we ain't judging nobody? OnlyFans, no judgment. Get it popping. But if you do an OnlyFans, let a bitch know. That is right. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, let a bitch know. Give us a discount. We'll promote it on here. <laughs> and just at least, you know, collateral is just to give your aunties a, you know, a free I'll, pass. I'll, I'll review it for you to give you some feedback. <laughs> oh, look. All right. So I know some community members be like, oh, that's all y'all talk about is fucking Beyonce. And, <laughs> but we'll, we'll it's move on. It's, <laughs> it, it, let, let, us, let it be known that it is in the show description. So show if you mad about that, bitch, read. <laughs> One star. <laughs> You're right. It was probably something you said. They, they, they talk about Beyonce too much. But take your ass off the podcast. Oh, my God. Oh, I, man, love, y'all, I love y'all community. Just so that you know. I love we y'all. love you. Y'all see everybody up in arms right now with uh, D- Donald Glover. And uh, Lakeith kissing on the Atlanta show. Hey, I have not watched okay. this season. I need to catch up, and I'm so mad. And so it's I'm missing so everything. Good. Oh, I, I, no, I haven't is. seen. I haven't seen this episode. So <clears throat> all I saw was it still on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, and I haven't. I haven't even seen like the the uproar. So I'm curious to hear what, yeah. what you've been seeing. Hey, hey, I've seen a lot from the straight black man that I follow. Like, I have some friends from Atlanta that are, some of them are in the music industry, and I'm like, y'all are really that pressed. Nobody want to kiss your ass? No way. <laughs> Let's get that together. But, um. And most of y'all gay anyway. I ain't going all that, because I don't even know all that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, um. I'll take that smoke. <laughs> but, right. <laughs> but the scene is, the scene wait, is talking wait, about. Wait, let me go, let me go private. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. Let me go back private. <laughs> One star. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Ooh. We really shading that one star person. We love that you. one star. I mean, we it, love it, it you, is though. what it is. Stop hating we on us. No, so we, we don't. don't hate back. Damn. <laughs> Keep that to yourself. Out of all the things that you could have did with your time, that's what you choose to do. Bye. And really, you is it still, a one star? Still, like, we ain't that go bad. Back. Come you, on now. You can still go back and edit it. It is what it is. I don't your, care. Your review. Anyway, but keep going. The, the point is to leave us a review. And if you really truly feel it's a one star, let us know why. You know, why? Us a DM. We, oh, we're here for feedback. 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 If, if um, you're going to be a bitch ass, at least let us ooh, know damn. why. Uh, oh, oh, damn. oh my goodness. We said all that. Damn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> one more <sorry>. star. <laughs> damn. <laughs> going down real quick. Oh, <laughs> Okay, but um, Donald but no, the scene, the scene, and I saw the clip of the scene was they're trying to get some sneakers, and the dude that's selling them the sneakers, like some high end sneaker that nobody got, he said, "All you gotta do is kiss your friend," and they're like, "No, no, no, I ain't gonna kiss." And then so Donald Glover's character is like, "Wait, hold on, like, 
these shoes, da da da. So it looks like they end up kissing. So that's the the, the still. Oh, mm. So Instagram yeah. and the toxic people are like, oh, why would you want to kiss your homeboy for some sneakers? It's like, bitch, y'all do a lot worse for some sneakers. A yeah. <laughs> people dying over damn sneakers, getting Honey, shot up over some damn y'all sneakers. Y'all are forgetting. Y'all are forgetting child support over some damn sneakers. Honey, like, okay. so we know the culture of sneakers in the black community. Don't be like surprised. But it made me think though. Is there something that, like, and I mean, maybe it's different in the gay community too, though. <laughs> but what would you do to, would you kiss your friend for what? What would you, what's the lowest, like, denominator thing that you would get that you'd be like, oh, I gotta kiss my friend? Okay, fine. It is what it is. I kiss my friends all the time on the back. Right. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying I'm <laughs> not this one. Not like, this nothing, one. Like, nothing. A greeting, a hello. <laughs> You're not kissing me on the mouth. You better take that shit to Adam. Well, so what? So what are we kissing? Well, what's the lowest denominator? Well, later what did I say? Us? I kiss my friends on the mouth. Oh damn! I'm watch, just your hands, watch your legs. Watch your legs. Watch your ass. Damn. What's damn. up? <laughs> what's up? It's landed the whole time. <laughs> damn. Oh so, Landon, what's the this lowest episode, denominator this... that you would kiss one of your friends in the mouth? Then. Yeah. Like, is it a, a piece of gum or is it sneakers? Is it Beyonce tickets? What what's the level to this shit? Taco Bell. <laughs> you stupid. It's like, give me a number seven. <laughs> a Mexican pizza. It's like that listen, shit back. He's like that Mexican listen, milk, that Mexican pizza back, bitch. Listen. You tell I, me. I gotta oh, kiss so one of my friends for a Mexican pizza or a Doritos Locos. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. I'm kissing my friend tongue and all, honey. Tongue and all. <laughs> uh, esophagus and bitch. Oh man. I know that's right. <laughs> Just put. I, I still, I'm still, I'm still like flabbergasted that this is like this is still a thing. Like I know. Okay, even when you're explaining the circumstances around the kiss, it's not like. Oh, they did a dream sequence where Donald Glover's character is gay, and so right. is um, Lakeith. Lakeith, like it, it's not like they're doing a, a sequence where like they're portraying themselves to be gay or whatever. They're right. doing this; it's a means to an end. So it's just right. like, like mm, I mean, mm, I mean, ain't most of y'all been in jail and done worse? Oh damn! Mm, for nothing. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Come on now. Yeah, it, like I feel like sometimes on social media, people have to pretend that they're, they're upset. Like, especially the toxic masculinity piece. That oh, you see your homeboy posted, so oh, I definitely chime in because like if but I you know don't you chime in, do it though, right? If you know I you don't chime do it in, look like I I would do that for some sneakers in. So I got one up what his post says. So, Hell no, it's just like all this shit, and it's, you see this, and you're like. We're back on that, y'all. <laughs> Nobody want to kiss you no way. No one wants right. to kiss you no way. Oh, so you Most boozy of y'all now. got hot breath That's anyway. What, you boozy now? That's right. who you are? <laughs> like, <laughs> and it, something is remotely, that's not heteronormative, normative, and you in an uproar, so you boozy. That's what you are. Pretty okay. Much. <laughs> Put yourself much. in that camp. <laughs> and, and, and it's like, and I'm, neat, I'm trying to find it now. There was this rapper, like, today that it was trending where he, um... He, and I'll send it to y'all because it is a nice little dick print. He had posted a thirst trap on his Twitter. And I was kind of not mad. I don't remember his, mm. the, his name. And people, again, t- females and all, chiming in saying, because his post was like something just like, or someone was like, oh, well, that's going to be so gay. You know, like, like, oh, no, he had posted someone come into his DM just like it was, it looked like a gay guy or maybe it was even a straight guy or something. I don't know. Saying, oh, you know, like almost like a no homo, but that dick print though kind of thing, mm-hmm. and the, and the rappers was like, hey, thank you, you know, I'm not gay, <laughs> but thank you, et cetera, et cetera. And then people were calling the rapper out, like, oh, you ain't gonna just go in on this dude, da 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 da. And his response was just like, hey, I will take the the appreciation by all genders. It is what it is. He's like, but don't put it on me that I'm either gay or a gay hater because that's your shit. Mm-hmm. I'll take the appreciation, but how I identify sexually is I like to fuck women. And he just mm-hmm. kept it at that. And I was like, that's fucking mature shit. Cause this rapper, he yeah. looked like he's maybe like 20. 
And for mm-hmm. him to be one of these up and comer big rappers to do that shit is huge because, the, like you said, we're still doing this today in 2022. Like y'all still got problems like that. Y'all still that pressure. You're still not dealing with yourself and your insecurities that you still try to put it upon everyone in our community. And it's a nice dick print. So he knew what he was doing. He's like, I, I'm gonna take the. Yeah. He's, he's like, I'm gonna take the love because I know what I got. Mm. He's, and that's what he said too. He said, I'm comfortable with my body, and I know what I bring to the situation. Yeah. So if the love that's coming back to me is from both genders, thank you. But I identify like sexually that I want to make love to women. And I feel that, like <clears throat> I feel like. And I'm gonna look up his is, name. Hold on. There's like l- low vibrational conversation that's happening. When it comes to like this toxic masculinity nonsense, yeah. you know, like if you feel like you have to be in an uproar about something that has nothing to do with you because you're not that, you are barking up the wrong tree. Like yeah. you have no stake in the game. This is no not a conversation you should even be in. Why are you chiming in? Like, why are you so bothered? It's NLE, uh, NLE Choppa. That's the rapper. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, yeah, so I want to at least get that name. So A, you could look it up because it's a nice picture. And then just B, I don't even be like rocking with a lot of new rappers like that no way. Because what I is it again? N L E Choppa C H O P P A on Twitter. <laughs> on Twitter, yeah. Um, and here, let me even find like exactly how he ch- chimed in and said it because I don't want to fuck up the wording because it was good. He he. You know, yes, you got to put them glasses on and the oh tip of your nose. Ooh, he said, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he says, first and foremost, I love myself, and I'm comfortable enough in my skin to show the beauty God blessed me with. Uh, he blessed with you a lot, homeboy. Mm. No, no, no. Uh, uh, give give secondly, it to me one more I, time. Hold on. Secondly, oh. I love all, so I don't mind attracting both genders. But most importantly, my sexual preference is women. Please stop trying to make me something I am not. And he put the little bless hands. Done. What is it again? N L E Chopper. <laughs> chop Chopper Style. Chopper Style. Chop Chop Chopper Style. <laughs> but yeah, that thing's slanging to the right. <laughs> well, apparently, <laughs> I just scrolled down, and apparently his uh, blowjob. Oh got wait! Leaked, so Damn, hold I- on. <laughs> <laughs> This podcast has deteriorated real quick. So it did. That's okay, though. We can chop out what we need to chop out. (laughs) Hold, please. (laughs) Ooh, leaked NLE chop. See, and we've had this on the conversation before. Oh, okay. Uh, Oh, damn. Got her face all in it. Damn, I feel bad for her. Uh, But that's one thing, too, that we talked about. about. (laughs) That's how it works now. I I guess so. And we've had that a conversation before, just like, okay, do, do we help perpetuate kind of some of the stuff where things leak and <laughs> land is still looking? <laughs> Dad, got, the, got the glasses I'm on. Got the glasses on. Honey, I know that's right. I know that's right. I mean, hey, by the way, community, if you, listen, if you are not, if you're listening to this on, on one of the streaming services, great, but you need to be watching this on YouTube because yeah. it, there's, it's a whole It's a whole nother episode. dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> and shout out to our friends who, and oh God, I forget their names. So the community members, these like, there's a couple uh, ladies that be, and I, I guess they identify as ladies. I don't know if you don't, but let us know. But they be like in our DMs Monday morning all the time saying, y'all just be out here ratchet, yes. and reckless. Thank you. Well, yes. thank you. Thank you for listening. <laughs> so shout out to y'all. And I'm a, by the end of this episode, I'm going to find your names because I wanted to shout y'all out because y'all be giving us a lot of love. Yes. Um, but yeah, so thank you, NLE Chopper, for being mature. Yeah, about this yeah. situation. Got me out here. My mouth is watering. God, that elevation. And uh, on that note, we'll take a little quick, quick tea break for Landa's sake. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna need it. Let me get one of them towels. <laughs> Shout. We interrupt this episode for very important information. That's right. You've been asking for it for a long time, and we have heard you. Yep, it's been a long time coming, but it's finally here. Yo, Yo aunties, aunties got, got merch. merch. Hey, <laughs> that's right. You know what? We got tees, we got long tees, we got sweatshirts, we got fanny packs. We got there's just a whole game of the stuff out there. So go and check that out. Mm. We are so appreciative of your love and support, and we are so excited to launch it. Girl, where can we find us at? 
ma'am. They can head right over to minoritareport.com to check out the selection. Mm. That's right. That's M-I-N-O-R-I-T-E-A report.com. Woo! I'm about to go get me some myself. <clears throat> I don't know who this man is. Sorry to this man. <laughs> All right, so I found I found the name Jacqueline Hay, Tia, Taya, T E E A. We spell yes. your government name, hopefully. <laughs> but thank you. You know, we yes. see you, boo. We see you, and we appreciate the love for both of you. And there's a couple more that I couldn't find that quickly, but thank you. You know who you are. So when you hear this part, hit us up in the DMs, and I'll say it again in the next episode. So, all right, ladies, what time is it? Ask, Ask your. your <laughs> Just action for no reason. I don't know what yes. I'm doing. I wish uh, I could do the runs that Beyonce does. Honey. And that, uh, and that, that's, oh you, my God. Ooh, ooh, and I love it, baby. <laughs> every, every time I hear hear those runs in that song, I, I always I always get the Bill Cosby face, you know. Just, it was like the stank face, like, ooh. She's singing. I mean, See, just we, going. Remember that episode? We were just like, she was singing on them hoes and let y'all yes. go. Hold on. Yes. Y'all be saying I'm rapping, but no, ho, I know how to sing. <laughs> it's just, it's just, that's talent. Mm. Like that, that gives me many Ripperton vibes. You know how many yeah. Ripperton, like just, yeah. you know, rest in peace, just, you know, like sings. Like, yeah. but she does yeah. very clear scales in, yeah. in her, like that. It's, it's just really impressive. It really is. Okay. All right. It says, hey, aunties, I matched a couple of days ago with this cute guy on Tinder, and he seems super interested in meeting up or in going on a date. But honestly, I have always been really scared of actually meeting up with people from dating apps because you never know if they are going to be genuine or not. So I find myself in this limbo in which I feel sick to my stomach and incredibly anxious every time I think about meeting him. But at the same time, <clears throat> I feel like it would be it would help me ease this overall tension and anxiety. I know it would, it would ease the anxiety and tension. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. What do you think? <laughs> and so I like this question. This question has been out there for a while. And I mean, obviously, the I guess the three OG aunties, we've all been in relationships for a minute. So, so with landing on here, it'd be interesting <clears throat> to get your take on just like app culture. And obviously, like there's the scuffs and grinders, but then there's like the, yeah. the tenders and things like that out there. How do you overcome some maybe some of this natural tension and anxiety when you're meeting someone new that you don't know if it's really going to be a catfish situation? You don't know how it's going to go. Are they genuinely interested in all that stuff? <clears throat> that's the thing. That's the thing you don't know. And that's a part of the risk, the excitement, the unknown. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So... What if this is the person no that intended. could, right? Mm. Um, God, you're so stupid. I, I, it. I was like, don't say it, girl. Don't say it. <laughs> um, so I say those are our natural feelings and those are natural to you. Like it's, it's not up to me to say you shouldn't have those feelings or you should. If those are the feelings that you have, they you get to own them, but it's what you decide to do with those feelings and do with that particular person or be on an app that is really up to you. So I say if you really want to do it, then your desire to meet up, to connect has to be greater than the feeling of butterflies of being anxious of being a little nervous because at the end of the day you went on there for a reason so you also have you have to think about what that reason is and i say those those feelings are natural especially you know within this technology culture where meeting people the old fashioned way is not necessarily the new fashion. That's just not the way that people meet as much. So unless you decide that you want to go out to a bar and randomly 
go to someone and 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 start up a conversation, buy up a drink. <clears throat> this is the way to do it. And ultimately, if you're on an app, you're trying to get something, whether it's a date or some dick. Um, <laughs> so you know, as, that's a Leviticus. I, we need to write that one. <laughs> date or I, dick. I like that. I, <laughs> I, I'll you know, at at I'll some point, you list. have to decide. <laughs> at some point, you got to decide. Like, what did you decide to get on there for? So. Think about what that reason is. If you re- really want to connect, if you want a long-term relationship, if you want a little fun, if you want a little, little bump and grind, um, you got to just remember what that is. And I think that those feelings are natural, but you just got to decide if you're going to take that shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of Dewan? Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to put myself in this person's situation. I feel like... Uh, this is not somebody that is, um, you know, this isn't like Grinder, right? This, mm-hmm. They said that they're, they met some, linked with somebody on, on Tinder. And although Tinder is, is, I guess, close to Grinder in the sense that you can hook up it still, but I, I feel like this person uh, might be more interested in dating versus hooking up and, yeah. um, and maybe, mm-hmm dealing with a little bit of like fear of rejection, you know, fear of whatever, whatever this could be. Um, so I don't feel like this is one of those situations where it's just like, you know, just jump in, you know, like somebody that deals with, with um, anxiety, you know, as a, a mental health condition. Um, it's very easy for people who don't have that same condition to say, just do it. Um, right. You know, but it's, harder for people to actually follow that advice because their anxiety can be debilitating. So I say all that to say that I think my advice would be continue talking to the person. You know, if you're, if you match on Tinder, exchange phone numbers, that's one layer of closeness and then start having conversations over, over the phone. Don't rush into the dating thing. If you, if you feel that anxious about, you know, the possibility of meeting up with somebody and you don't, without knowing whether or not they're serious about dating you, right? Because they could, you, the fear could be that, hey, you know, this guy seems really cute, seems really interested in me. I'm really looking to date, but he might be, you know, just using this app as a hookup app. And I don't want to like play into that game and waste my time. I would say chat the person up until you get to a place where you feel comfortable, you know, and then when you feel comfortable with the conversations and how they're going, da da da, you know, then you can make a determination as to how and when you want to meet. And then I would also say, if you're nervous about just the conditions of meeting, you know, make sure that it's in a in a space where you feel safe and you feel comfortable and you feel like you know the that it lends itself more for you to get to know this person versus like maybe the pressure of a like a dinner date you know where you have to you know what i mean like because i sometimes feel like date um or dating especially like when you're going on the first date can have so much riding on it the potential that um sometimes we undercut you know the experience so i would say chat the person up more um to you to it do you get comfortable in the conversation. If this person is kind of like, you know, hey, I just want to like meet real fast, then I think that's a sign to you that they're maybe not the person that is for you. They might not have the patience for you. Maybe they're not in it for the same reasons that you are. They're not willing to take, you know, take the time that it takes to meet the person that's right for them. And they might not be the right person for you. And even though they're cute, or whatever sometimes you got to let cute cute boys go because you know they're not the right ones for you so yeah. that would be my advice what about you Carell? yeah no i think you guys nailed it and it's just like ultimately sometimes you just really need to define what you want and and, and then set those expectations like either in your profile or in these conversations as they move along like dewan said if like if you're getting the feeling that it's just going to be like a hookup and that's not what you're seeking out Say that shit then because you don't want to leave someone on because then that gets frustrating on the other side too. And they're like, well, and you know, it's just like this culture of ghosting and all this stuff. So yeah. to find what you want and it's okay. Like that's the cool thing, honestly, about a lot of apps. It's like there's thousands of dicks and asses in the sea. You're going to find one or two. 
<laughs> and just, not just body parts. Right, just something <laughs> right, that's true. Uh, but it's like you're gonna find what you're seeking and you're gonna yeah. and, but first it starts with you defining what you want. If you honestly don't know what you want yet, sometimes you're gonna have to take the little ri- the risk, like Leander was saying, and, and put yourself in these situations until you get comfortable. Because a lot of times you don't get comfortable till you get unfortunately the reps in it. <clears throat> it sounds weird to say that about like dating and hookups and things like that, but sometimes you might need to get a couple reps in. To, to know what makes you comfortable in those settings and makes you know, be like, you know, I don't like dinner dates. I like movie dates. I don't like movie dates. I like a walk in the park or whatever it may be and, and, and finding <laughs> what you really are comfortable in. And, and I agree, though, you want to figure out what makes you comfortable because there's nothing worse than being like sitting there at a date and you're just anxious and you're getting all this mm. stuff. And it's just not enjoyable for all parties at hand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, but I think the butterflies and the anxiety, I think everyone kind of feels that a little bit going on to dates and things like that. Um, so, I think that's probably just the natural process of it. But, again, you, you miss a thousand percent, a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. You know, um, And people also kind of give you the cues. It sounds like they're interested in you, especially with if this, I don't know if this is females or guys or non-binary or what the situation, but from my experience... What's that kind of hint that they interested? You kind of in there for at least the first date, at least, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, and, and so I, I would take it be like, hey, if you feel like they're interested, take that shot. Not all of them are going to go well, though. Be okay with that. Be okay with that. That there might be some botched situations as well. <laughs> so that's okay. That's okay. What are you doing? Um, it's it's funny. I, so I I recently had a situation, and Dewan, you'll now get an update. This is fresh breaking news for you. So I was talking to. Um, <laughs> so was talking to this dude for a couple of days. Um, he hit me up on Hinge. And uh, that's just like hinge, another Tinder. Hinge, uh, yeah, a little she had bit. To school me because I was it's like, I don't know what this I'm is. This like, sure did. This this you know, I, this, I gotta. This you know, I gotta. Like I gotta. What is? What I gotta. Is this? What the fuck know, is hinge? You know, sometimes you gotta <laughs> school the old folk. Honey. Um, so, was talking to this dude. He hits me up. We exchange numbers. We're supposed to go out for dinner or something on a Thursday. I end up having to work late and. I made that choice because I wanted to spend some time with my team. And so he's like, um, how about Friday? Because we were just going to meet later on Thursday. He's like, how about Friday? I was like, okay, Friday's great. He gets the, um, Friday comes along. He's like, oh, my event is running late. Okay, fine. He's like, how about Monday? I'm like, okay, great. So Saturday comes along. He text messages me. He's like, hey, handsome, what's up? I was like, hey, not much. Chill in, whatever, whatever. I get crickets. Monday, unmatched, blocked. Oh, wow. Ghosted. And at first I was like, this bitch. And in my mind, it's so easy to get caught up. It's so, it's, it's just so easy to get into your feelings. It's so, but you know what? Again, no pun intended. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. I could have met up with this dude. It could have been a phenomenal time and there could have been a future. But you know what? I'm a firm believer, a firm believer that God takes people out of your life and vice versa when it's not right for you. And in this moment, I had to think about like, you know what? This dude wouldn't be able to handle me. He wouldn't be able to handle this dick. He wouldn't be able to handle this personality. So you know what? His loss. Can you handle it? Michelle, can you handle it? The answer is no. Can you handle it? (laughs) Layla said, I I don't think you can handle it. You can handle it. it. Uh, So at first I was like, oh man, like it would have been great. It would have been great. But then tonight, this dude comes up to me tonight He's like, I'm really sorry about, you know, to hear about your dad because it's been 20 years today. Um, I was like, oh, thank you. Um, He's like, what's your what's your Insta? Because I had said something about Insta earlier in in a class that I taught. And uh, he's like, what's your Insta? So follows me, says, hey. And I'm like, this dude I've been crushing on for weeks, (laughs) weeks. 
hits me up on Insta while some bitch in New York decided to ghost me, good fucking bye. So you know what? At the end of the day, things work out the way they are supposed to. If you take the shot and you decide that you want to ask someone out on a date and you want to meet up, if it works out, great. If it doesn't, so the fuck what? Keep yeah. it moving. Yeah. Keep it it's moving. It's the multiples for me. It's the multiples, right? <laughs> That's dope. Options, yeah. options, yes. options. Yes. You got you got Honda Accord LXs. You got EXs. You got special editions. You got V6 with a sunroof. <laughs> options, so honey. You find out Melissa Ford drive a Honda Accord. <laughs> oh, damn. I'm rapping yay. Nope. I got to get the yay terminology out of my mouth. Uh, <laughs> right. And we'll get on that. Uh, but, yeah, if you're comfortable, take the shot. If you're still yeah. working on yourself, then, okay, it's okay to kind of yeah. set yourself back. But, don't don't worry about the the, the butterflies. It's going to be there for everybody. It's stay genuine process. and stay authentic to you and yeah. why and what you are looking for. Absolutely, plain and simple. So, so continue to send your ask your aunties to aya at minorityreport dot com or d at us. Um, yeah, I just quoted Yay. Uh, yay is out here tripping, tripping now. He done made the Jewish folks mad. But here's the crazy thing: the, it took the Jewish folks mad for all these contracts to drop. So yeah, <laughs> I'm like they, they kind of proved this point. That's the fucked up thing. They kind of proved the this whole point. fucked up thing about this. Yep. It, it proved this point. It sucks. It sucks. <laughs> y'all, y'all, it sucks. You, w- w- Kanye has been slimed since 2009. All right, and at the end of the day, we need to stop giving passes to people who don't give a fuck about us or others. At the end of the day, Kanye is trash. He's always been trash. Why do we continue to support someone for some motherfucking sneakers that probably aren't even that good? No, they don't. They are dope. <laughs> no, they no they're not. Look. They come no, to they're not. Sale. No, I don't give a fuck. No, no, I'm not. No, I'm not putting. No, 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 no. I'm not putting sneakers on. You ain't gonna kiss nobody for some sneakers. Fu- <laughs> Hell no. Hell no. One I don't star. give a fuck. <laughs> we, we just get one stars all this episode. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck how comfortable they are. No, I, when I, you put no. when you put shoes on your feet for someone who doesn't give a fuck about you, no, no, thank you, no, thank you. I'll throw those shits right in the fucking garbage. I don't fucking care. <laughs> do you fuck think Kanye? Kanye? Fuck Kanye. Oh damn. Okay. Do you do you think see. that it's you know he's clearly going down a spiral? Yeah. I just saw an article that says, I think it was in Forbes or something like that, that says that when his Adidas contract ends, he will no longer, you know, his net worth will have depreciated. He won't be a billionaire anymore. He'll be worth 400 million. That's crazy how big that contract is. Yep. And so I just, I'm curious if you think that, that as he's in this downward spiral, right. And whatever, do you think that there's a possibility that, that there could be a, a comeback, a turnaround? Here's the thing, I am not God. Like it's, and so if, and I know the whole Christianity thing. That's a whole other thing. But for me, it still is a big part of how my compass is, and at least what I've been taught that is, if you put in the work and you believe and kind of better yourself, there's always a second chance because that's what God did for us. We we be tripping all day every day. So who am I to say, nope, nope, no more chances for you. However, you still got to do the work. You got to show the proof. You got, and that's what it would take for me. And it's got to be a habitual proof. <laughs> and it ain't gonna be just a one day thing. Be like, oh, you came back. Okay, we got you. Nah, like just as long as the last decade you've been kind of tripping, yeah. it might take me another decade or two for you to habitually show you're no longer tripping. And and, and I, you know, honestly, it's interesting from Jarrell last week. Honestly. The, it's hard in this instance because we know a lot of it is mental health. Yeah. And it's like on one hand, it's like, it's like, where, where is the line sometimes? And this one, I mean, this, there's a lot of lines on this one for me, but it's just like, it just sucks that you see a human being spiraling so bad, 
But then on the other hand, you know, there's at there's a there's a point where there's nothing you can do. They have to also want to better themselves as well. Yeah. And so yeah. You, sometimes you just got to just let go and it is what it is. And that's the hard part for a lot of us, especially in black culture. We, you know, it takes a lot for us to be like done, done. And, and R. For Kelly. All, exactly. Exactly. Cosby. <laughs> there's, I mean, Jackson. Like, there's a mm-hmm. lot of names. There's a lot. There's our uncles, our <laughs> cousins. Our, right. there's, it, 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 and so... So that's why I think it's so hard right now. And, and I know you say like the sneakers, but there is just a, it's a whole cultural thing that we have identified with Kanye. There's mm-hmm. a whole come up part of it that people identify with Kanye. There are times when Kanye was actually speaking that truth that we identify with Kanye. But now here's a point where he's literally breaking down our culture. He's breaking down what we thought he had built. And so for some of us, we're feeling like, okay, was that a mirage? Was that a facade? Is this how you were truly feeling the whole time? So that's the part where it's just like, it's been very hard for some people, maybe not landed, but for some people to like start to uh, dismantle their association with this human being. And, and for me, it, truly, he was one of my favorite rappers. He was one of my favorite pr- producers. Them shoes are comfortable as shit. Now, I know you don't like them, but them shoes are comfortable as shit. And they're cute. I don't give a fuck about and, those sneakers. And so it's just like those moments where there's certain people that you look up to <clears throat> that you're like, fuck, dude, like, stop disappointing me. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you another shot. Damn, you disappointed me again. And 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 so, and then you start talking about other folks, even just outside of us. It's like, dude, you're just breaking everyone down because you're not comfortable where you're at. And you don't know if that's the mental part. You don't know if that's tr- his true thoughts. And so it's just a lot wrapped up in this human being right now. But it's rightfully so that his contracts are getting <laughs> taken away. It's rightfully so that he's getting dropped by his talent agents. All of this is rightfully so. But it, it, it's sad to see. But it is what it is. He's doing it to himself. And after a point, yeah. you got to let go and let God. And it is what it is. So, yeah. And it just sucks that you write the one exactly what he's talking about, though, about the Jewish part is what <laughs> happened. But it just sucks that like he was also tearing <laughs> us down too. Like you know, right. it's like right. So it's like shit. But it, and, and it's like and and I, and I say this because like I support the Jewish folks. I have Jewish friends, and that sounds very racist. People are like, oh, I got black friends. But no, like I I genuinely support that community. So what the fuck he's saying is fucking bullshit. Fuck you, Kanye. Stop tearing people down because you're tearing your own self down. So you're trying to tear everybody else down. That ain't cool. Um, so lose all the contracts. I don't care, but it, it just, it just, it sucks. It sucks all the way around. It sucks. I think, I think at, for this, it's been a while that people can see the writing on the wall yeah. that there is, the guy is brilliant, right? Yeah, There's yeah. no denying that this, this, this guy has, um, a brilliant mind and is immensely creative. Um, he has an artistic heart um, and he pours it into his crafts and, you know, it works. But, um, you know, his own mental health issues or whatever, I don't, I mean, I'm not here to diagnose him or whatever, but yeah. like whatever it is that he's bat- battling internally, right? That to make him be so aggressively um just that makes him so aggressive against everyone um you know it's it's at this point it's beyond infuriating it's now sad yeah it's now just i think people see that this is lost potential because yeah. what he has the what he what he could have had the capacity to contribute to society in a positive way he's done a 180 and he's focusing on doing things in a negative way it's like oh yeah. you you from what it looks like for me you know you think you're clever by doing this or doing that oh i'm going to wear white lives matter you know or i'm going to you know I, i'm i'm playing into these kind of like yeah. You know, these po- political and social, um, I'm playing against those tropes. And, you know, 
only history will be able to tell when we look back 20 years from now to see the whole thing and how it has unfolded. Will we really be able to assess, um, you know, like what the impact has been? But it's just in the moment, I feel sad for him. Um, I don't excuse and I'm not, I don't, right. I want to be very clear that right. this is not an excuse for his behavior yeah. because shitty behavior, shitty behavior, period. You reap what you sow. <laughs> so, you know, but again, you know, I just, I feel sad <clears throat> for, for him because he's got to be dealing with something or so blinded by something yeah. you know, that he has no awareness of the wreckage, the carnage that he is creating around himself and it's unfortunate. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So I hope this is the last week in a row because this is three weeks in a row that we've been talking about. Yay, but it's gotten worse <laughs> and worse and worse with each week. And you're like, fucking man. A, man. When your own bank says your money ain't, ain't don't live here no more. Honey. <laughs> you know, like that's, mm. ooh, it's bad enough that, you know, you get fired from your job and now you can't keep your money in the banks. Damn. Right. So. I, 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 I guess I, I struggle with... Oh, but, oh, but you I, stand. <laughs> good. Good. Let it be You ain't got to justify known. nothing. We, we, we understood. I guess... We understood. She said, we might as well be talking about Jarrell right now. <laughs> Damn. She said, we, we, we called it, girl. We understood. <laughs> I, I guess I just struggle with having... And, you know, I'm, I'm all about being empathetic. I really am. It's hard for me to accept or understand what you just said. Racism is not a mental illness. It's it's not. And and for he's he's made some choices. You want to wear, you want to be, you want to support Donald Trump. You want to say and do all of these things. And it just, I I have a hard time reconciling that these things are outside of being bipolar. And and I know that comes from maybe understanding a little bit more and and I can I can do a better job about that. But it's hard for me to understand why you felt the need to get on stage and embarrass and steal somebody's moment. It's hard for me to understand why you think it's okay to support Donald Trump when Donald Trump doesn't give a fuck about you or people like you. So it's hard for me to be sad for someone who doesn't give a fuck about people like the three people that I see on my screen right now. It's hard. And I understand that bipolar, being bipolar is something that people struggle with. It's hard for me to accept that some of the behaviors and some of the things and choices that he's made are a part of that. I don't I don't think I'm making the correlation between, you know, mental health and his his, you know, uh, personal or political or social views. Right. I think those things can be mutually exclusive. But what I'm what I'm saying is, is that his um, clearly he is a person that is, um, you know, struggling with. um I, I want to choose my words carefully because what I don't want to do is try to like, I'm not trying to diagnose a person, you know, right, but, right. but clearly there's something going on internally where the result of whatever it is that he's dealing with internally results in him and la um, lashing out and, and using others. very, yeah. Use d indulging, very destructive behavior. Yeah. I've said on this podcast many times, I said in many conversations with others, you know, I'm not, I will never like dictate for somebody else what they should believe. I, I know people that are Republicans and know people that, you know, that believe certain kinds of things that I don't necessarily believe. And that's mm -hmm. their right to believe those things, but believing something and then acting in a behavior that disenfranchises and puts right. other people at risk are two totally different things. Right. You can believe something and then, and, you know, support, you know, candidates or whatever, or support policies or whatever that, that support your position. But when you actively campaign or actively engage in behavior that is destructive to 
everyone around you, his wife, his children, his record company, the, the, the partners that he has through, you know, uh, the partnership, the, the professional partnerships that he has or whatever, you know, actively disregarding those things, it makes one wonder why. Not me. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> she said, she one said star. one star. <laughs> one star. <laughs> Kanye, you get one star. Um, so yeah, so yeah. Hopefully one day, I, and honestly, that's just the, the, how I am a person. Hopefully one day there is a redemption story. I don't yeah. know how he'll be able to reconcile and, and rebuild some of the relationships and some of the destructive things that he's done because that shit outlasts people. Yeah. You know, it's, the second you put in seeds in people's minds, that shit grows and multiplies in ways we can't even foresee. So that sucks. But at least for him personally, hopefully he gets the help that he needs. And again, we're not diagnosing nobody, but hopefully yeah. he's able to f- find whatever he's doing because clearly he's destroying himself and everybody and it's not cute. Um, rest in peace to Leslie Jordan. That one, oddly, kind of broke my heart a little bit. Like, for me, like, in honest, I didn't even really know much about him until COVID. Like, I knew he was on Will and Grace, but I never really watched Will and Grace and things like that. But, like, the joy that he exuded, I'm such a joy person, I, it makes me boohoo. Like, I am such a person that is attracted to joy, that's attracted to kindness, like, it's my love language, just yeah. be kind is such a motivator for me and something that I'm attracted to. So, I think that's why it kind of shifted me a little bit. I was like, ah. Oh. There's a, a light in this world that's now gone, you know, mm-hmm. and, and luckily his stuff will live on. But at least from my perception, he just exuded such a joy that was so infectious that what made you want to like perk up a little bit, made you want to laugh a little bit, made you want to smile yeah. a little bit and, and spread your own kind of like kindness and joy that oh, it, it hurt. It hurt. If, if you are not familiar with um, Leslie Jordan's work, um, beyond Will and Grace, I highly recommend you see, watch the movie Sorted Lives. It was okay. done in like the early 1900s, 1995, three or something like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Back you know, in that's, my what day. that's what the kids say. Back in right. the 1900s. Of the years of your. <laughs> but it was like 19, it was like 1991 or 93 or something like that. Um, but it's a, it's a movie, um, that is subversive you know it's very much of the vein of like a john waters film or something like that so it's very subversive um and he plays uh he plays this character called brother boy that is um he believes he is the reincarnation of tammy Wynette. so he's he was put he was put in he was he's his family lives in texas he's in texas he was put in an insane asylum uh, be- by his family, which sounds really awful, um, because he believes he's the second, you know, reincarnation of of Tammy Wynette, and um, he he's you know a cross dresser and blah 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 blah, and so um, these series of just really unfortunate events unfold that introduce us to this character of his called Brother Boy, and okay. it's just <laughs> what's the name of it again. It's called Sorted, S-O-R-D-I-D, Sorted okay. Lives. And <laughs> pre- high-level premise, <laughs> so this grandmother of this family dies. She And I'm not giving anything away because the movie's been out forever. Um, <laughs> right. But she dies because she was hooking up with her daughter's ex-husband who had no legs. And so he let, but he had, he had wooden legs that he left on the floor. So she got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, tripped out the legs and then fell and busted her head. So then she died. So that's how everybody found out that she had this, (laughs) that she had this affair. This is all very trailer park, very Texas, very like, you know, whatever. So then the children all get in together for the funeral and they're all like super embarrassed because the story, this is a small town, the story's getting out and you know about how she died because it's a small, it's a small town or whatever. And the, the quote unquote main character is this 
young gay boy named Troy who moved from Texas to Hollywood to make it as an actor or whatever. You know, it's like one of those old gay la da 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 da. But he comes back. He's working. He's like you know seeing his family and his aunts are crazy. He has one aunt. Um, Laverne, who is trying to quit smoking, so she's doing the the rubber band things. So every time she wants to yeah. take a, a cigarette, you know, she snaps her. So there's all these kind of kooky kind of characters, okay. and then here comes Brother Boy out, <clears throat> you know, sauntering yeah. through the insane asylum where he, he where he has performances in drag <laughs> for the other tenants. And that's Leslie Jordan's before, character, and that's Leslie Jordan's character, and he's working with a psychiatrist that's trying to de-gay him because apparently <laughs> he has a severe case of homosexuality. Okay. So it's, yeah, it's just... And I guarantee it's, Corey's probably seen He's like, oh, you ever seen this? Oh, it's... <laughs> Treat your, that's you not how Corey it. talked, though. <laughs> yeah, no, he did. But that, the the sentiment is there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, if you really want to get a sense of his acting yeah. prowess and whatnot, it's just it's just an absolute. His comedic timing is recommend. like impeccable. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So well, 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 <laughs> Karen <laughs> Walker, as I live and breathe. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> some people just have it, some people don't. And he's one that definitely had it. So, um. And, and, and it's sad to see that he was literally getting to the prime of his talent, Career. honestly. Yeah. 67 years old, and it's been the mm-hmm. last two years that he's really skyrocketed. To young, fame. young, young, so, 67 he was on, young. He was on, I remember a while ago, um, uh, I was on Cameo, which is this app yeah. where you can like pay celebrities and whatever to like yep. um, give personal messages. And so he had a thing on Cameo <laughs> Um, and at one point it was four hundred dollars. Yeah, I believe it. To pay for him to like because the demand was so high. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and he, yeah. he just did a uh, interview, and I just watched it today. He was on CBS this morning, like the Gail King one, which I love. That's a good morning show. I think it's um, a good show. And they were doing an interview with him two weeks ago, like just talking about his like him being a singer now, a country singer and everything. So they, that was what the the, the show was about, and they had to like repurpose it to his death and they yeah. just showed it either yesterday or today i watched it on youtube today but it was just it's sad it's yeah. sad and i was yeah. like i was like wow why am i so choked up about this but it's just something about that joy <clears throat> that joy that ah uh, it, it makes and me- he had he was a person i, I feel because he couldn't mask yeah. his affect yeah he he just he somehow through all of the social pressures and everything else yeah. and being an actor and yeah. da, 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 he, he embraced it. Yeah. And, and so to your point, there's something really liberating and attractive yeah. about somebody who just embraces who they are. Yeah. And that's what he did. And he yeah. just showed up authentically in everything that he did. He's kind of like, you know, Billy Porter or, yeah. you know, anybody that really kind of like embodies, yep. you know, their femininity and, you know, their, their, their Southern drawl, their whatever it is that makes them them. And he then just chooses to that. give. Yeah. yeah. Give yourself to others. Dewan, you know? did you know that? Did you know that he was in Star Trek Voyager? Did you know that? Yes. Yeah. I did not. I was yeah. very, uh, you know, we some Star Trek fans of it. Yeah. Uh, I did not know that. And when yep. it came down to, uh, I received, you know, when I saw that text from a friend, I was like, damn. And I think a lot of it does have to, we think about his journey. He, he experienced, and we just got done talking about some, you know, mental health and things like that. He, <laughs> he, and I kind of dismissed it, but fuck it. Uh, when it came down to <laughs> Leslie Jordan, one star. <laughs> you know that one star is probably me. Uh, probably and episode that's, I'm on. That's episode uh, title number two. Right. right. <laughs> uh, he he experienced substance and alcohol abuse, yeah. and and there was a point where he he crossed paths. I, I want to say this is somewhere in the '90s where he crossed paths with Robert Downey Jr. And we all know that he, Robert Downey Jr., experienced some substance abuse and alcoholism um, back in the 90s and before he became major, you know, in Iron Man and some of the Marvel's films. So I think when we look at Leslie Jordan's 
trajectory and we look at his life and how he kind of overcame those things. And then we got to know him personally through will and grace. We got to know him through the pandemic. And then we see something like this, a car accident, which, you know, he, he may have had a medical emergency that resulted in the the car accident. We're like, damn, like it didn't have the life is short. You just don't know. So, you know, anybody who can joy. make this life. Yeah, spread, spread joy. joy. Anybody, that will be his know. legacy. His his legacy will be making people laugh and yeah. spreading authenticity. And here's the yeah. thing, like, and I know we're hopping in way over time, but um, that's the difference between, like, a Kanye. It would suck, and I don't want it to happen, so don't say I'm putting nothing on nobody. But it would suck that if he were to pass, people would say, but. Yeah. That right. sucks, especially when you have yeah. such talent and the capacity to 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 give to others a joy and and to take that joy away from others now sucks and then on the other hand you see someone like a leslie jordan might not have been as talented as a kanye but he took the talent that he had and decided to multiply it by spreading joy and it, it received people received that way better and so his legacy will continue to go on yeah long after he's gone so Sorted um, lives. I'm telling you, treat yourself. I'm gonna look at. I'm gonna look, right, yes. treat yourself. Oh, okay. Noted. So quickly, Brittany Griner, her appeal was denied. We know what that's about, though. Well, I mean, it's it's been like that the whole time. Um, right. So that sucks. So like, it sucks that. I mean, it's so many layers to this shit. <laughs> it's insanity. I, I don't. The only way she's gonna be able to get out before the nine years is to do some kind of prisoner swap. Russia knows it. Unfortunately, we know it. And it, we'll see what happens. But literally, she's a, a prisoner of war right now because Russia is acting fucking crazy right now. And so they're going to try to utilize that the best they can to get what they want out of Ukraine and the U.S. Yeah. Um, so Brittany and the family hang in there. This is a tough situation to be in. Um, but we can't forget her. And I'm glad the yeah. NBA, at least opening night this season... The Golden State Warriors, they won it last year on their open night as they're getting the ring. Stephen Curry, who's probably the biggest star in the league outside of maybe like a LeBron, he brought it up during their speech. So we got to continue yeah. to keep her keep her name fresh in everyone's minds. We don't want her to get swept underneath the rug. Um, and it just is a tough situation to, 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 to have her in um, right now. Um, yeah. And then also... First non-binary and transgender person to have a number one hit on the Billboard Hot yeah. 100 is Sam Smith. Love and, uh, that song, and, uh, Kim uh, Petrus. This song is a whole. The first time that I heard, it, I was like, "This is an old ass bop." You ever heard it yet? No. Oh, it's a oh pop god. Of a song. It's so good, and and the part this that I love, Tom, Sam, this is the Sam, yeah. we, Sam we needed about two this, albums this ago. Is, <laughs> it, you know, I guess I don't know what part I love more—the Sam part, or the Kim Petras part. I guess I love it. I, I love it. I love it for both of them, but I definitely love it for for Kim in yeah. that she's finally getting some some radio play that she's yeah. deserved for a long yeah. ass time. Yeah. And uh, I went. This Sam's uh, first number one song. In a crazy. I yeah. thought Stay With Me was a number one song. It was a number two. It got stopped oh. all those weeks that it was. I, I, like I was fucking love ago. this song. Yeah. I love yeah, that this, song. I, this is what, and I just love the un, un, uncompromised the song is. It's very queer. It's very cunty. It's very. Daddy, daddy. Right. It's very drop gay. That it's, it's, get me yeah, left. It's, get it's me Fendi. The thing is, like, it still allows Sam to sing on it. He's still getting his little crooner moment on it. But it's yeah. just like, we just need a little queer bop of a song yeah. from Sam Smith more often. God, I love that song. Especially, I was talking to um, a friend of mine that I went. At the body shop. Doing something unholy. Doing something unholy. That's holy. a bar. That's I, uh, a bar. <laughs> a friend of mine, a friend of mine, and I went apple picking uh, back in Chicago a couple of weeks ago, and he's like, "Oh, it feels like a Halloween song." I said, "No, that's it's 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 not necessarily." Yeah, it might be a little convenient that it came out maybe a few weeks before Halloween, but you got to look at the deeper pun intended meaning of Mm -hmm. of this in that we've got two people who are non-binary who 
have elements of, of queerness in, in their, in their yeah, art and, and who they are. Album. Right. And yeah. who they are that this song is taken off, man. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to Boston this weekend. Y'all hoes better be ready. Cause I'm doing this in my class. I hope y'all hoes ready. Cause I'm playing this song. <laughs> I know it's a oh, bop. Yeah. It's a bop. So check it out, Duan. You'll like it. It's All right. A, I'm, I just got it queued up. Yeah, yeah. I, I the day it came out, I listened to it, and it takes a lot for me outside of maybe Beyonce for me to just put a song. And it was like during Beyonce, like I was listening to Beyonce album. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I stopped the Beyonce album, and played this song probably like a good ten times that day. It's just okay. a bop of a song. So, okay. so dope. Shout out to them. Glad it's number one. Community, stay safe. Happy Halloween. Stay safe out yes. there today. It's turkey month now. Get that turkey ready. Yes. Get the recipes ready. Get them candy mm-hmm. yams ready. Watch, Fake. watch, watch, <laughs> watch. Ooh, yes. Watch who's making that mac and cheese. Watch who's making that mac and cheese. And wash your hands and your legs and your ass okay. <laughs> before you be playing in our food. See you next week. Bye. Bye.